Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday, I introduced a new application called Avalanche. With Avalanche, you could convert the catalog from one photo processing application to the catalog of a different photo processing application, including all of the edits. In yesterday's video, I converted a Luminar 4 catalog and all of its edits to Luminar AI. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Avalanche performed really well doing that conversion. It pretty much did the conversion spot on as far as the edits were concerned. The only thing it wasn't able to convert were layers. I had some spot removal done on layers in Luminar 4. Luminar AI doesn't have layers, so it wasn't able to copy that over, but it did everything else, and I thought it performed very well. I had mentioned in that video that today I'm going to convert a Lightroom catalog to Luminar AI. Now you could convert Luminar AI to Lightroom, you could convert Luminar 4 to Lightroom, you could convert all different ways, and you can convert Aperture to Lightroom, Aperture to um, Luminar 4 to Luminar AI. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this. I just think that this would be a way many people would utilize Avalanche, those that have used Lightroom in the past and want to use Luminar AI, but they don't want to lose all their edits and stuff that they did in Lightroom. Well, hopefully Avalanche will help you with this conversion uh, to Luminar AI. Now I had mentioned in yesterday's video that my real Lightroom catalog has tens of thousands of images and I didn't want to convert the entire catalog. Somebody from Avalanche saw my video and they messaged me and they gave me some more information about the application and I'm very happy they did. But they uh, seemed to mention that um, Avalanche can convert large catalogs. You know, it, they could do it no problem. People have done, you know, 100,000 images. And I didn't mean to imply that Avalanche couldn't convert a large catalog with a lot of images. I just meant I didn't want to convert my large catalog with a lot of images because I'm making a video and you guys don't want to listen to me talk and watch things convert for hours. So, so I've chose 20 images and I've made a new catalog and I've chose 20 images that are a little bit different, meaning this is an iPhone image, it's a JPEG. This is a Nikon D500 image, and in this one, I used a brush to brighten up the vulture's eye, so we'll see how it does there. This is another Nikon image, but it's heavily cropped. Here's just a straight Nikon image. Here's another Nikon image. Here is an HDR image shot with the Nikon D800. We'll see how it does there. Here is another HDR image shot with that same Nikon D800, but um, it's a PSD. I, I don't remember what I did, but I'm must have brought this image into Photoshop to do something. Here's another HDR image, it's a PSD image. Here is a, I forgot, but that's a Nikon image, I forgot what camera. This is a Sony A7R4 image. Here's a Fujifilm X-T4 image, that's a Fujifilm image. Here is an image that I shot with a Sony uh, camera, but I brought into Silver FX Pro 2 by Nick Software and did some editing there. And then I did some more editing in Lightroom. We'll see how it converts that. Uh, this is that same image, but this is the actual Sony RAW file with some editing done. We'll see how it does there. There's another Sony RAW file. Um, there is... Uh, this is uh, just a, a, a Photoshop image. What I did was, it's a, it's a straight night shot, but I added the stars in the sky and the reflection of the stars in Photoshop. See how it does there? This is a straight Sony image. Um, this is a TIFF file. I don't remember why it's a TIFF file. I don't remember what I did. This is a image shot with a Z7 II by Nikon. And this is a Z7 II uh, Nikon. So we'll see how it does with all these 20 images that I have in a Lightroom catalog. Every image has editing done in it in Lightroom, even if it's a PSD that I did something in Photoshop. I did some Lightroom edits as well. So we're going to close that down and we're going to go to Avalanche. And as I mentioned yesterday, you could just pick the volume that you think you have your catalog on and it will search for all the catalogs that you have. But I know my catalog that I just created, my test catalog, is right here Lightroom Avalanche Test Catalog. That's what I called it. 
and it's right here, this LR Cat, that's Lightroom Cat. So we'll just drag it right there, and then it will come up with some data. It's uh, 18 masters, 20 versions, not really sure what that means. Uh, probably because I had that, um, like for example, I had that Sony image that was sent to Silver Effects Pro 2. I had the actual RAW file, and I had the Silver Effects Pro 2 uh, image as well. So we have that. So I want to convert this catalog. We're just going to convert it. And I want to convert it to Luminar AI. See, I have the choice, Luminar 4 or Luminar AI. We're going to convert it to Luminar AI. There's no videos, doesn't matter. Copy reference master files, um, sure. Separate image and video hierarchies. There's no videos, doesn't matter. Uh, type of folder structure. We're just going to make it flat uh, because I have it actually flat, a flat uh, folder structure in Lightroom as well. Import of available previews. Um, when they emailed me yesterday, they emailed me a lot of information about the previews and how it tries to approximate previews. I'm just going to again click never and let let Luminar AI create the previews. It just, the first time you open Luminar AI with the new catalog, it will just take a little longer to render each image because it's creating the previews. So we'll just let that do that because I think that worked fine. And we'll click next. Now it's asking me to put it somewhere. I'm going to again put it on that same hard drive I did yesterday. This one. And uh, I'm going to, what should I call it? My converted Lightroom to Luminar. Oops. AI catalog. Nice long name. All right, we'll do that. It's going to go right in that catalog. We're going to choose and I'm going to click convert. And you can see, oh, wow, that went really fast. Okay, 18 masters, 20 versions, that's what it said before. And it has some info here, we're not gonna get into it, it's just telling that albums were created, blah, blah, blah. But we're gonna open the catalog. So we'll click right here, and we're gonna open Luminar AI with this catalog. Then we're gonna compare the edits. So let's see how it did. Luminar AI is opening. Okay, there, you can see they're a little blurry because I didn't, uh, I didn't bring over any previews. It's got to create them itself. Um, what we'll do is we'll go back here and I'll close down Avalanche because we don't need that. And we'll go to Lightroom Classic. We'll go back here. So we'll compare. We'll go to our Polar Bear image. And then we'll go to Luminar AI and we'll go to our Polar Bear image. All right. So there's our polar bear image in Luminar AI. There it is in Lightroom. Um, you could see, let me do this. You could see, I think it's quite different. So that one's quite different. You see this one's a lot cooler. Um, let's go to edit, see what, you can see wherever there's a little dot, it did something. So it did composition because I must have cropped the original uh, light color. I don't remember cropping it. Yeah, I did crop it. So you can see, so it did, it doesn't, that conversion doesn't look as good. Let's go to the next one. This is our vulture. Now it's a little blurry because it has to render. And like I mentioned, it will take just a little while for that first render. We'll go here and look at our vulture. There is our vulture in Lightroom. And there's the vulture in Luminar AI. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I put a brush, remember, around to brighten up the eye, and I was wondering if it was able, going to be able to uh, capture that, and it did. It seems like the Luminar, or the, I'm sorry, the Lightroom version has a little more, um, a little more contrast to it. So we'll go to this one. This one was heavily cropped. And we'll go to there, let it render. That one's, I think, looking pretty good so far. Yeah, there's that one. And there's Lightroom. That was not bad. Let's go to the next one. This is the Tiger. Bear with me here as I try to fumble through these. And let the Tiger render. Tiger is going to look pretty good. I think I used a brush on the Tiger's eyes as well. There's the Lightroom version. That one looks pretty good. So it's doing pretty good so far. Here is... Um, the Giraffe. There was... I didn't put a white background on that. That's just... The ceiling was very bright. It was inside, actually, and the ceiling was, was very bright. So um, the giraffe looks like it has a white 
seamless paper background behind it, but it, it really doesn't. Uh, so that one looks pretty good. And again, I think the main idea here is it's going to get your edits close, and then you could touch them up, uh, but it will save you a lot of time. So this is the uh, HDR night scene. Let's go to Luminar. Let's let it render. If it renders. Oh, okay, that one's not good. All right, that one's really bright. So we'll go to light. Um, probably the HDR might have screwed it up or the night might have screwed it up. See how it has exposure at 2.07. Let's bring that back down to zero. All right, now there is that after I adjusted it or fixed it, and there is that. Um, the the um, Lightroom version's a touch warmer, I'd say, but still not too bad. I mean, you are, we are converting two dissimilar catalogs, you know, one to another. So it's gonna do a lot of approximation. Now here is another night scene that is an HDR image and it did okay on this, but this one was a PSD and the other one was a DNG. Uh, so let's go to that. That one, that one looks pretty good. So here's the Lightroom version of this HDR image. And we'll let this one render. Taking a second to render again. All right, yeah, that one looks pretty good. Maybe a little more. This seems the light run, the Lightroom images have maybe a touch more contrast in them overall. If you had to nitpick, um, but render that one looks a little sharper too. In the that's the uh, Luminar version. All right, let's go to this Niagara Falls image. This is a Sony RAW file, and let's go to Luminar AI and see what this looks like. Um, okay, I think that one's significantly different looking. Just not as sharp. Maybe this one has more uh, dynamic range. Uh, the whites are a little whiter. The blacks are a little blacker. That's the Lightroom version compared to the Luminar version. All right, let's go to this one. Let this do its thing. Let it render, and then we'll go to the Lightroom version. All right, that one I could tell right now doesn't look too good. Yeah, there's the, let it render. There we go. There is, this was shot with the Fujifilm X-T4. That is a raw file that I crop square, or not square, but crop like that, smaller crop. And you can see that one's not as good. You can see here, I think, did I take this out of the other image? Yeah, so the spot removal, I use spot removal in Lightroom to get rid of that, and it didn't get rid of it in Luminar. All right, here's an X-T4 um, again. So we'll go back to Luminar, see what that one looks like. Let it render. All right, yeah, that one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. Colors seem a little different, but overall not too bad. Uh, okay, this is that one that was a Silver FX Pro 2, and then I did some more editing in Lightroom. See what that looks like. Is it renders? All right, this, it's, I must be out of order now. This is the actual RAW file. Remember, I had an actual RAW file. And there's the Silver FX Pro 2. So it just, those are two backwards ones. Let that render. It looks pretty bad at the moment. Okay, there it is there. I'll go to Lightroom. Eh, it's pretty similar. I mean, the the Luminar one might be just a little bit too sharp. But at least, again, it's getting you close. Uh, here is the Luminar version of a Sony uh, image. All right, now we'll go to this one. This is the one we skipped. Doesn't look too bad. Now we'll go to this one. All right, this is the Lightroom version of that image. And there's that. So those look considerably different. It seems that the Sony RAW file, maybe it's having a little more of a difficult time. This is that um, one where I added the stars in Photoshop. Let's see what it does here. It should be pretty similar. Let's see once it renders. 
Yeah, that one, that one looks pretty similar. And this is another Sony RAW file uh, with some editing done in Lightroom. And this is going to be the Luminar version. Once it renders. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good there. So it's, so again, it kind of gets you close. This was a TIFF file. I wanted to include a TIFF. I think this is the last one. Yeah, it looks pretty good right on. Even though it was a TIFF file, I did editing in Lightroom as well. Yeah, the warm the Lightroom image is a little bit warmer than the um, Luminar version of the image. Oh, there was one more. This was a Nikon Z7 II. Let's let it render. And then we'll go here. Yeah, again, the Lightroom seems to be a bit warmer than the Luminar version. And here's another Nikon Z7 II. Now, currently, as I'm making this video, actually, um, Luminar does not uh, recognize the Z7 II RAW files. So this will probably improve with the next update of Luminar. They're supposed to have that camera support included, the Z7 II, Z6 II, and also the Canon R5 and R6 are supposed to be included in the next uh, Luminar update. That will probably make these conversions look a lot better because this one, you could tell, is considerably different to that one. So I wasn't keeping score, but it was probably, I would say, better than 50% as far as acceptable conversions, like ones that just need a little touch up, like, you know, that one I had to bring um, brightness down, you know, exposure down a little bit. But, um, you know, overall, um, not bad. I mean, it gets you close. There's nothing else on the market that could do this that I know of. So uh, check it out. Again, I, uh, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, and I have, I have linked below, I have no affiliation with the company that produces Avalanche. I'm, I won't make any money if you purchase it. And um, they're not paying me to do these videos. And all that they did, they did give me the software for free for my evaluation. So I did get the software for free. So again, I'll have links to everything in the description below this video. Let me know in the comments section what you think about it. And um, you know, they do, as I mentioned, you could get it. It's a Mac-only app. I should have said that at the top. I am apologize. Um, the, uh, it's available in the Mac App Store. And when you download, you could download it for free, and it works as a trial at, when you download it for free, and it will do 100 images. So maybe you could get a test 100 image, you know, catalog together and uh, check it out, see how it works on your images the way you edit them. And then if you want to purchase it, you could purchase it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.